Good morning. Welcome to all of you who are here in the worship space and to those of you who are joining us online this morning. Special word of welcome to you if you are here for the first time. Uh, please know that everything that you need will be on the screens and uh, the bulletin for this morning can be uh, found by scanning that QR code either that's on your screen or that is around the space here in the worship space. And um, that it gives you, the bulletin gives you the kind of the order of service, but it also gives you announcements that aren't made out loud uh, this morning later too as well. So I invite you to scan that QR code and pick up your bulletin. If you, we will have communion as a part of this morning's worship. And so I want you to know that all are welcome and that includes those of you who are online. We encourage you to get some bread and wine or something close to that um, ready and so that you can participate with us as well. And the same goes for those of you who are here in the worship space. All are welcome at the Lord's table today. If you're new and uh, would like to know more about faith, then I encourage you to either check out our website at www.faithgolden.org or, um, or you can uh, email us at info at faithgolden.org um, or catch one of us after the service. We'd love to tell you more about this community we call Faith and, um, and why it's great to be a part of it. So uh, with that, uh, then we begin our time of worship. And so I invite you to stand and join in singing, Come Thou Font. This morning, one of the great gifts that we are given and that we have the ability to share is the gift of God's peace. 
And so um, in a moment, I'm going to invite you to um, share God's peace with one another. For the, our friends online, I invite you to share God's peace with whoever is with you. We always invite those of you online and here in the worship space, take out your phone and uh, share God's peace with those who might not be physically with you this morning. Um, but take that time here in the sanctuary um, to make it easier to not do that whole, like, do I shake hands? Do we hug? I'm not, I don't know. Just cross your hands over your heart and look some of the people in the eye and say the peace of the Lord be with you always. And that way um, we don't have all that fumbling and, and everything. So I say to you, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Will you please take a few moments and share God's peace with one another? I invite you to find your way back to your seats. Have a seat. Um, and just for those of you who might be wondering, because this is the first weekend of spring break, um, there is no Sunday school this morning. And so your kiddos are welcome to be in here with us um, the entire time. There are, huh, I'm running around this morning. There are, there's a, a little shelf back in this corner that has crayons and things like that, and there's a play area here, and um, <clears throat> there's pencils and cards, and yes, we realize the cards get drawn on, and that's fine, and uh, so, and just know this, your children will bother you way before they bother me. So, uh, will you join me, please, as we worship this morning, let us pray to God that in his grace and understanding, God may reshape and reform our hearts. Will you please join me? O oh God, who makes all things new, new stars, new dust, new life, take my heart, every hardened edge and measured beat, and create something new in me. I need your newness, God, the rough parts of me made smooth, the stagnant stirred, the stuck freed, the unkind forgiven. And then by the power of your spirit, I need to be turned away from my selfish desires towards love once again. This we pray today. Amen. Jesus, you shall be my song as I journey. I'll tell the great body of God you wherever I go. You are Lord of life and our peace and love. Lord Jesus, you shall the 
First reading comes from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 3. But now, O Jacob, listen to the word who created you, Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you says, do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. The second reading comes from 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 16 and 19. Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials for you are going through, as if something strange were happening to you. Instead, be very glad, for these trials make your partners with Christ in his suffering, for that you will have the wonderful joy of seeing his glory when it is revealed to all the world. If you are insulted because you bear the name of Christ, you will be blessed, for the glorious Spirit of God rests upon you. If you suffer, however, it must not be for murder, stealing, making trouble, or praying into the other, other people's affairs. But it is no shame to suffer for being a Christian. Praise God for the privilege of being called by his name. So, if you are suffering in a manner that pleases God, keep on doing what is right, and trust your lives to God who created you, for he will never fail you. I could pretend that I could read it all. And then we get somewhere in the middle and you have no idea what I would say, so, nor would I. <laughs> well, first of all, I want to thank Bill for preaching last week and Michelle and Paul and the whole rest of the team um, who continued to serve, which allowed me to be with our brothers and sisters in Christ up at Christ the Servant in Louisville. Um, it was a privilege to be there and, um, and know that they deeply appreciate our prayers and our continued support for them. Um, Christ the Servant had their pastor, Stephanie, who is a friend of mine, plus 15 other families lose homes in the fires. And so um, it was a blessing to be able to gift Steph with a day that she didn't have to preach. So thank you for that. Um, and know that they treasure your prayers and support as well. And so we find ourselves today in the midst of our Lenten journey, looking at how our lives are like bread in Jesus' hands. Jesus did three things most often when he had bread in his hands. He blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it. In the past two weeks, we've looked at, um, at our status of being blessed. That blessed is actually our identity, not something that we earn or or that somehow we, we, we do it right, so then we're blessed. But we are blessed because Jesus claims us. So no matter what today's circumstances are for you, 
you are blessed this morning. It's core identity. And then last week, Bill reminded us that all, even those we deem as outsiders, are blessed, are claimed by God. We talked about our circle of compassion and asked us how far does your circle, do each of our circles of compassion go? That we need to be conscious, intentional, to work on welcoming those, especially those we deem as outsiders. Jesus was and is a barrier breaker, which means if we follow him, we should be too. Today, we shift then to the second thing Jesus does with bread, he breaks it. Now, this is perhaps our least favorite analogy because let's face it, let's be honest, we don't want to be broken. We don't want to be around brokenness. That brokenness is messy and it can be ugly and it can be hard. Isn't it really what we really want? Even though we know here it's not true, but that if we follow Jesus, if we do enough of the right things, then we'll have the good life, right? Yeah, no. And we say we understand that, and yet we don't live as that. As much as our identity is blessed, our world is broken. Things are not as they could or should be. And I think we play a dangerous game when we think just the good stuff is part of our life with Jesus. And I also think it's why so many of our faiths get shaky when times get tough. Because there's this underlying feeling that I'm only in God's good graces when things are going well. And when they're not, then somehow God must be mad at me. Well, that's not really good theology, my friends. I've lived a good life. I'm loved. I love Jesus. I even work for him all the time, right? Like my life should be good. And it is, but it is not untouched by the brokenness in me, nor the brokenness in the world, or and the brokenness in the world. My friends, I will, I've said it before, I will keep saying it. We live in a broken world. Things here on earth are not as they could be. There is brokenness in systems. There is brokenness in attitudes and in choices. There is also brokenness at large. Things we have absolutely no control over. Disease, death, other people's choices. Stuff that just happens because there is brokenness. And it's not all God's fault. I get a little, yeah. When I hear people say things like this, for instance, in a mass shooting, when someone lives, well, God saved them. Or when someone dies, well, God needed them more than we did. Or when the crap hits the fan in someone's life, well, it's all a part of God's plan. I wish we would quit saying those things. Why? Because they're not true. In a mass shooting, when someone lives and God saved them, what happened to the person that died? Did God not save them then? When someone dies, God really needed them more than we do? God's already got them, whether they're here or in heaven. So it doesn't really matter where we are. God still has us. When the crap hits the fan in someone's life, it's all a part of God's plan. Really? When your life falls apart, do you really believe that's God's plan? It's not. It is not. We live in a broken world and there are other forces than God at work in our world. And so broken stuff happens. People die. People get killed. Unprovoked invasions happen in places like the Ukraine. Is this God's plan? No. People get sick, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, ALS, on and on. Some get better, some don't. Does that mean that God loved some better and not others? No. There are car accidents. This past week, six young people and their coach from a college, college golf team 
and a 13 year old and a man in the truck that the two hit, they died. Was that God's plan? No. When a 16 year old in my youth group in Minnesota died in a car accident, was that God's plan? When my life was turned upside down by an abusive person, was that God's plan? When my good friend lost her first husband in a helicopter training crash um, in the army and then lost her second husband to lung cancer as a result of being too close to the fire pits in Afghanistan for too long and then lost her stepson a few weeks ago to suicide, is that God's plan? When I watch friends struggle with work conditions or fa friends' families struggle with the dynamics of split homes, or, and I can go on and on and on and on. If we say this is all God's plan, God looks pretty darn mean and callous. And this then is where our faith falls apart. If God is that mean, who really wants to follow that kind of God? How do I explain a God who takes those I love away from me or lets bad things happen to people that I love? How do I worship a God who willingly breaks us with the things of this life? Do I ultimately believe that in the end, God's plan will prevail? Absolutely, I do. And do I believe that God can use the brokenness in our lives Absolutely, I do. But more importantly, a better question to ask is, do we believe that God is with us in the midst of the brokenness of this life? The answer is a resounding yes. Isaiah 43, Sonia just read it for us. Many of you know it well. They are words of comfort. But listen closely. But now, beloved ones, listen to the Lord who created you. Children of God, the one who formed you says, do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you, I've called you by name, you are mine. This, this equals that blessed life. God calls us by name, we are his. And now for life's reality, continuing in Isaiah, when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. Not if, <coughs> excuse me, but when. And how? How do we then go through these struggles, God tells us, for I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. <clears throat> that there is the promise to hold on to. There is the promise to base our faith on that no matter what happens to us, around us, Jesus says, I am with you. The creator of the universe, the redeemer of our souls is with us. In case we don't catch it in the Old Testament, then Paul says it again in 1 Peter in the New Testament. He says this, dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you're going through. As if something strange were happening to you. Instead, be very glad for these trials make you partners with Christ in his suffering so that you will have the wonderful joy of seeing his glory when it is revealed to all the world. Don't be surprised. Our suffering makes us partners with Christ in his suffering. I never really thought about it that way before this week as I was studying for this sermon. When we suffer, we always think about Christ coming and suffering so he knows our pain. But when we suffer, when we face the trials of this life, we also know Jesus' pain. And then Paul tells us in suffering, we will then also 
no joy. It is never a question if brokenness will cause suffering in our lives. It is simply a question of when. And we desperately, desperately want it to be if. We do all kinds of things to mitigate all kinds of troubles so that we can believe, say we believe that it'll be if. <clears throat> but it is always when. It's a really uplifting sermon today, isn't it? How you feeling? But actually, it is. It is because Jesus has provided for us in the midst of Brokenness and its side effects are not a big surprise to God. God they don't take God off guard because God is in the midst of it all. And that is very good news. Broken bread in Jesus' hands becomes more than enough. It becomes something more. It enfolds Jesus' presence. This is why we break bread every week here, to remind us of the brokenness of our world, to remind us of how God works, enters into that brokenness, to be the presence of Jesus, who literally goes by the name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Blessed, yes, we are. Broken, yes, we are. But we are not broken without hope. For in the hands of Jesus, even brokenness can become holy. This week, my friends, be reminded, no matter how bad the brokenness gets, our God, your God, is with you. Holding the broken pieces with you. And he promises he will never leave you. This is why we can sing. This is why we can worship. This is why we can hope and we can hang on. This is why there is joy. And so my prayer for all of us this week is that we might know the peace, the joy that is ours in the midst of the world's brokenness, in the midst of our own brokenness. Because in the midst, that's where God is. Will you pray with me, please? Jesus, we so desperately want the brokenness of the world to not touch us. We so desperately want to live the good life that we often blame you when brokenness comes into ours. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will come and you will wrap each of our hearts in your grace, in your love, in your presence. Remind us again and again that you are never absent. Even in the darkest of times when we feel the most far away from you, you are with us. Let that be the promise that we hold on to. Let that be the truth we live by. Let that be what gives us strength and courage to face whatever today and tomorrow and the next day and the next day bring. Remind us again and again that we are blessed because you have claimed us and you call us by name. And that we are never, ever alone. I pray this in your name and in your power. Amen.
and I'm standing in the fire. I will not be overcome. Through the valley of the shadow, I will not fear, because I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. You need some deep sorrow. Your light is breaking through. Oh, tonight, tonight, overtake me. I am pressing into you. And Lord, you find my every battle. I will not fear. I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will remember that promise as much as we remember all the bad of life. I wonder how much um, angst our souls would be able to let go of. But it is a promise that we renew every single Sunday in the bread and in the wine because we know that in this bread and wine it's not just simply bread and wine but it is the gift of God's presence. And so for those of you online with us, I invite you to hold your elements as we hold the elements here and to join us in the words of, um, that Jesus spoke. And so th those who are here in the worship space, I invite you to stand and to say these words with me. On the night Jesus showed his greatest love for us, he took a piece of bread gave thanks for it, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples as he gives it to us today, saying, take and eat, for this is my body given for you. Whenever you eat of this bread, do it and remember me. 
And then our online friends, I invite you to pick up your wine or grape juice, whatever you have, and then to say, join us in saying. After supper, he took a cup of wine. He gave thanks for it and blessed it and gave it to his disciples as he gives it to us today, saying, take and drink. For this is the new promise in my blood shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of all your sins. Whenever you drink from this cup, do it and remember me. And as we remember and as we prepare to come, then I invite you to pray with me the prayer Jesus prayed. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. For our friends online, we invite you to um, take the elements and to serve each other. If you find yourself alone, physically alone this morning, uh, remember that you are partaking in this meal with all the saints. For here in the sanctuary, um, there will be two, um, we'll have two stations here in the front where you will receive a piece of bread and then um, you'll receive a little glass of wine or grape juice. Wine is darker and on the outside, uh, grape juice is lighter and on the inside. Once you have the elements, partake of them and then you can drop your cups in the um, empty, the waste baskets here at the side. If you need gluten-free wafers, we have those. Please just let us know. Um, this is also our time when we take our offering. And so uh, for those of you who are physically here, you can drop it in the basket as you come forward. For those of you online or for those of you here too, um, the ways you can do, you can also give online and that's in the bulletin or on the front of our webpage as well. And um, as you feel called to, um, to give, we invite you to do that. I want you to know that all are truly welcome at the table this morning. It does not matter what your church background is or if you don't have any at all. If you believe in the love of Jesus, if you desire that love in your life, then we invite you to come this morning. And so my friends, with that, come. Eat, drink, and be fed with the bread of life.
I can't find the words I can barely breathe Falling on my knees Heaven help me Heaven help me I can't feel you near I can't hear you speak Falling on my knees Heaven help me Heaven help me Heal me Heal me Cause I can't walk this road alone I can't do this on my own Pray with me, please. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for meeting us here today, not only in the bread and the wine, but in the faces of those around us. Remind us as we go from this place, as we go into our day today and into this week, that you are always with us. And Lord, as we pray for that reminder again and again, we also realize that um, throughout this week, we might be your presence to someone else. And so I pray that you would open our hearts and our eyes to see the places where we can be your shining light, love, and grace in the lives of someone else. And Lord, maybe that person is really close to us, and maybe we've never met them before. But Holy Spirit, give us the courage, knowing that you walk with us, to reach out and to shine your light and love. Lord, today we pray for those who are struggling in any way today, whether that's emotionally or physically, mentally, spiritually. Pray that you would make your presence known to them, we pray for those who mourn. We pray for Shirley Ashlock's family, 
as they mourn her death. We pray for those who mourn the death of loved ones in the Ukraine, in Russia, and in all places of the world. Lord, the situation, there are so many situations in our world, the Ukraine not the least of, where it just seems like there is no end to the brokenness. And so I pray that you would make yourself known in mighty and in powerful ways. For I believe, Lord, you alone have the ability to change hearts that need to be changed to save lives that need to be saved. But above all, to be the God who is present with us. So give us grace to follow, give us courage to act, and give us joy in this journey with you. We pray this in your name and in your power, Jesus. Amen. So a few announcements before we head on our way today. Um, first of all, Shirley Ashlock, member here at Faith for a Long Time, did pass away this past week. And um, her funeral will be this Friday at 1030 a.m. here at the church. Um, and you are welcome to come. There will be um, a reception afterwards in the fellowship hall. And um, burial will be actually on April 11th um, at Fort Logan. She will be buried next to her husband there. And so, um, again, that's Friday. Uh, the 25th, or March 25th, at 10.30 here in the worship space. Uh, Wednesdays of Lent have to apologize to those of you. We've trained you really well to expect a new link each week. And, um, and so, and we failed at that this week, so I apologize. Um, the, the link will continue to come out every week now. But know this, that if you can't find it, it's always on the front page of the web page, and it is the same link week after week after week. So you can go back and find it. Um, but join us for conversation and music and prayer on Wednesday nights. It's all online, so no matter where you are, you can join us. Um, and then Deanne, are you making these announcements? I, I see your name by them, so I'm going to assume that you are, are making these. Alrighty, good morning. Happy spring break to all of you kids. Yay! I love spring break. Okay, so just a quick, quick, quick reminder. This Thursday, the 24th, the last day to order your caterpillars. Okay, so make sure you get them ordered with the QR code that's up here on the screen or the actual link is on Facebook Teams and e-news and we've got a lot of caterpillars ordered so it should be a really beautiful celebration on easter um, letting our butterflies go i just wanted to um, assure those of you who are going to participate in this it is not difficult i've had a lot of emails and um, people are worried about what they have to feed them and what they need to do to care for them it's nothing nothing at all it's not a long-term commitment it's not it's it's <laughs> not it is absolutely not when you get your caterpillars, they are in containers with the food, and you just watch them. You we, watch. We are, we are cautioning people not to like name them, though, right? Like, well, you, know, you can. We're get too yeah, attached. But they're, they're going to go away. Yeah, well, they are going to go away. Yes, right? they yeah. do. They do. So, in another form. Yes. yes so, a beautiful form. But. Um, yeah, so that you get the food, you just watch the process as they turn into chrysalis. And then the only slightly tricky part, it's not even really that tricky. Once they are chrysalis, you trans you transfer them to a habitat. And I will have materials for you for these habitats. And they're very easy. We're doing DIY. D, is it? DIY. DIY. I always do DIY. DIY. If you would rather not do a do-it-yourself habitat, a few people have asked me, where do you get a fancy one? You can go to Amazon and get one for about $15. So if you would rather not have to make a habitat, you can get one of these. It's similar to this. So anyway, if you have any specific questions, just grab me or send me an email. And then um, Lent resources, the QR code is up there. Um, I think, oh, never mind. I'll, I'll get to that. But um, do we have the QR code for the Lent resources? No. Oh, okay. Was it at the beginning? 
OK, anyway, so just continue to use the Lent resources. Again, e-news teams, Facebook, and all that stuff. First communion workshop. Um, that is on Saturday, April 4th, and it is 10. I wrote the 4th. I can't yeah, believe it. I don't know how I did that. Okay, <laughs> Saturday, April 2nd. Okay, Saturday, April 2nd is the um, workshop for First Communion. Now, the way this works is there is no specific age required to participate in this. Um, parents, if you feel your kids are starting to ask questions about communion, why does this go on? Um, what's it all about? What does it mean for me? they're ready to start having those conversations. It, you know, communion is one of those parts of our faith journey that even as adults, we are still processing that and um, trying to understand it. And so it's not that you're just automatically ready at a certain age. If you would like to have your children participate, um, just send me an email. I believe my email is up there, deanne at faithgolden.org, um, or you can catch me in the lobby and I'll put your name on the list. Parents participate in the workshop um, with their kids. It's an interactive workshop, starts at 10 a.m. on that day. We have a first communion celebration, which is the first, first, the first, first communion of your child. And that will be on Monday, Thursday, April 14th. Did I get that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, April 14th. So during the Monday, Thursday service, I didn't say Monday, Who's, what'd you say? Monday, Thursday. Oh, what's going on over there? Stop. Okay. The, the Monday, Thursday service in the evening during Holy Week, it's at 630. That is when your child will take their first communion officially. We will live stream that service. So if you have family members or friends that would like to um, watch that celebration, um, they will be able to do that. Okay, that's it. Okay. All right. Seriously, like, gosh, you guys, I mean, that's oh, like all good. this peanut gallery stuff Well, I know, you have to, like, disregard the band most of the time. But do you, you do know that there's a screen right here in front of you? Nope, never noticed that Yep, before. right there, right there. Uh-huh, right there. I'm old-fashioned. And exactly right what's on there is exactly what's behind you. Fantastic. <laughs> and I didn't have my readers on. That's probably why oh, that's I said why April 4th, so, okay. Oh, one last thing. Kids Camp Registration opens on April 1st. There will be a zillion pieces of information about that, but... Yes, a bazillion. And yes, it will be a zillion pieces. So, um, <laughs> yeah, the yeah. Again, um, there is no age limit on First Communion. And um, even if you're wondering if your child is ready, bring them along and, and um, you know, and we'll, we'll do the workshop together. It is for kids of all ages. So if you've never done a First Communion instruction and you would like to, um, anybody can come and be a part of that day with us. Just know that it's geared towards kids so it might be a little simplistic for some of you who are older but that's never hurt that never ever hurts us and you get to bake bread so just saying um let's see oh nominations we are receiving nominations for council um the nomination nominating team is at work right now and um and so council um is the overall overarching body that um helps steer guide direct make sure we're on track um, here at Faith, and um, and so we are looking for uh, three nominations, or we'll, we'll be filling three spots plus a treasurer spot, which is an elected um, spot all its own. We are in particular need of men this year, so um, we try to balance male, female, younger, older, all of that, and our balance is a little skewed um, at the moment. So um, if, you're, if you yourself or you know someone who you think would do um, a great job at that overall leadership level, um, please let me know. I would love um, to hear your suggestions as well. And then the nominating team will take those suggestions and um, come up with the ballot for, um, for us at the annual celebration in May. And um, I think that that is it. And so um, I invite for announcements, so I invite you to stand and to receive God's blessings. Now, as we go from this place today, may the peace of God be in your heart. May the grace of God be in your words. May the love of God be in your hands. The joy of God be in your soul. 
and in the song your life sings today and every day. Amen. I think we need to celebrate any pet that you don't have to do pooper scooping for is a good thing. So thank you for that. <laughs> it's a great thing. Here we go. There's a little percussion. Sometimes the world feels like a mess, full of drown or full of stress. And life puts a fist right in your ear. You can hide, you can choose to. No one would even blame you. You can let them see how you deal with it. But even in the darkest place, His love can make you radiate. It doesn't matter how big, how dark the night is. Deep hope, you keep on shining. They'll see His light burning in your heart. Hey. And if you know this brother, just keep your head up. Let the world see what you made of. His love is alive in your deepest heart. Hey. Like a flame, like a burning star, you can shine right where you are. And they do, do, blow. Hear me, darling. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. But don't be ashamed of your past. It'll be shattered like a piece of glass. The more broken you are, the more like it's true. Hey. Show your wounds and your flaws. Show them why you still need to cry. Let it be the Lord keeps doing it in you. Let it be in the darkest place. His love can make you ready. Yeah. It doesn't matter how big, how dark. They'll see his light burning in your heart. And if the world is rough, just keep your head. Let the world see what you made of. You'll stop the light in your deepest heart. Like a flame, like a burning star, you can shine right where you are. You may do the world in the dark. That even, that even in the darkest place, if I can make you radiate, it doesn't matter how deep, how dark the night is, deep open, deep on shining, there'll be light burning in your heart. Hey. If the road is rough, just keep your head up. Let the world see what you made of. Give us a light in your deepest heart. Like a flame, like a burning star, you can shine right where you are. You may be the glow in the dark. Do do do. Do do do. Do do do. Do do do. All right. You guys are great. God bless. There we go.